Great. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming today. Um, just like to welcome everyone who's not native of Dublin. We don't usually have wed weather as terrible as we do right now. It's not the norm, so bear with us and please come again. <laughs> um, I, my name is Lorraine Morris, and thank you for the introduction. I head up the IoT business here in Vodafone in Ireland, and also in the Nordics. And I'm here to talk to you about business benefit that IoT can deliver. Next. So just to, first of all, set the scene, I'd like to just, just to give you a bit of an insight into Vodafone, into our, into our relevance in IoT, why we, why we can give you a bit of information about that. So firstly, Vodafone have been delivering IoT solutions for almost 20 years. When we began in this space, we were connecting very basic machines, telematics units, uh, street lighting, um, energy meters, some very basic things. And it was, it was very small amounts of data that was being passed over the cellular network, sometimes SMS, sometimes you know, uh, voice dial-up. So it was quite traditional. And we recognized that this was a very much a growing area, that it was very much worth investing in this technology. We saw the benefit that businesses, that citizens could really, ben you know, could really enjoy as a consequence of connecting up machinery. So we invested and created a proposition a global SIM solution with a managed platform to allow our customers to control their data needs and control their, their set of a machinery, machine estate out there. And over time, we have enhanced that. We have added to our range. We include uh, integrated terminals, uh, modules, SIM cards, art modules, sensor arrays. Um, we can also offer um, data analytics services, cloud and hosting. So we've extended the portfolio out so it includes quite a number of services in the IoT space. And after, um, after this period of time, back in April, we changed the name of our business unit from machine to machine to IoT. And we feel it just rel it, it, it's relevant for what we offer the market and also um, what our customers are seeking from us. So, so we have a vision statement um, to connect every machine to transform lives and business. And I'm really here today to talk about some of those transformational changes that can be enjoyed. So... Again, just a little piece on our caliber. Um, we're, we were delighted last month that Gartner recognized Vodafone again as a leader in the space of managed M to M connectivity. So, so that sort of reference our, references our capability as a global leading communications provider to connect up services. And you know, over the 20 years that we've, we have been providing service, we now connect over 41 million devices around the globe. That base is growing at a rate of one million connections per month. And the data consumption is growing all the time. We've seen a 44% increase in data consumption since last year. So it goes to show you just how much this marketplace is absolutely exploding. We're in a quite a strong position. Revenues are growing to the extent of about 29% year on year. And that growth allows us to invest further in our skills and in our teams. So we've got a, we've got a team around the globe that can support customers as they're looking to deploy solutions. There's 1,400 of us. So maybe just to move on to, you know, again, bringing it back to the benefit. Um, we conducted a piece of research, and we've been doing this for the last four years, um, to try and understand what customers are saying about IoT. And at this stage, I have to quickly check my notes for the stats. But we've, we've run this... Sorry. Something went to funny with my slides, did it? No. <laughs> um, for the past four years, we've been conducting, conducting this research um, using interviewing experts around the globe. Uh, in the last report, it interviews 1,100 experts, um, business leaders who have launched, deployed, or are in the middle of deploying a solution in this space. Um, a copy of this piece of research, it's called the Barometer Report, a copy of it is available in your digital gift bag, so you can download it for free. There's also, you can get a copy from our stand downstairs at, st at stand 49. So um, that, uh, that research will, has shown us some great insights. First of all, we talk about adoption in it. So we can see that um, a, the lot, a lot of companies are actually deploying it, but 76% of companies who are in the middle of considering IoT have said that they're deploying it and they're looking at these projects because they believe it's of critical importance. So what I mean by that is it's not just that they want to test and dev with some, some of the latest technology that's out there. They actually believe that this is going to change how they run their business and provide an improvement. Um, obviously, it takes a little bit of time to go from considering this through to actually deploying it. 
But uh, we know that 28% of customers have live IoT projects already deployed, and a further 35% are planning to deploy them in the next 12 months. So what, I'm see what we're seeing around the world is that there's more and more projects developing. Of those who had already adopted a solution, 63% said they had seen significant return of investment from their solutions, which was up 15, from 59% last year. So we're seeing improved measurable benefits there. Those, again, are detailed in the report. So, so I suppose what, what we've also seen, the final information that's probably of note is the level of investment. So we're seeing more budget being assigned to IoT projects in the future. So 89% of companies have increased their spend. So I think it just sets a good context. If you're considering an IoT deployment, this type of evidence allows you to maybe support that strategy, to seek further funding internally, and really to, you know, to prove that you know, this is the right juncture, this is the right project to consider. So um, just to kind of consider um, how a company might go about delivering an IoT solution, how they might generate that benefit that we've talked about, that these organizations have already enjoyed. There are a lot of different services out there in the market that you can, you can look to deploy. You can buy off-the-shelf fleet tracking services. You can buy complete end-to-end -end solutions. And we, we know that those are already available in the marketplace. Vodafone currently provides some end-to-end -end solutions, so for example, in our free, our, our, as, as a consequence of the purchase of Vodafone Automotive. We uh, are, sorry, as a consequence of the purchase of Cobra Telematics recently, uh, we now have an area of the business called Vodafone Automotive. That is a solution that we provide to automotive dealers, including BMW, Daimler, General Motor, Jaguar, Land Rover, a number of automotive vendors around the world. And we provide a service that is an end-to-end -end solution, a component that can be fitted into a car at manufacture that will detect where a vehicle is. It can monitor driver behaviors, detect swerving, braking, and a crash. If a crash event occurs, we are able to co contact the car, contact the driver, and ensure that they're safe. So our secure operating center can reach out and speak to the driver and potentially <clears throat> contract emergency services. So what I would consider that to be is a complete end-to-end -end service. And as a buyer of an IT service, it's quite convenient to be able to, to find vendors out there that can do that, can, can offer you the complete end-to-end. -end. That immediately will you know, speed up the time to improve your um, benefits and, and achieve benefits from these deployments. And it also takes a lot of the effort, the effort I suppose, out of um, deploying them. So, so that's an end-to-end -end solution. However, many organizations need to build their own. They need, they, or they may have a very unique um, proposition that they're looking to deploy. So they often come to us to seek connectivity service. So just demonstrated here, Vodafone have a range of access services or tech connectivity options that we can offer our customers. And we recognize that cellular communications isn't always the right fit for a customer use case or a company's use case. You know, in the past, we've typically used an awful lot of 2G, 3G. So, for example, Kone, who are a lift company, um, they, they would use our connectivity to connect up lifts, have a voice activation inside the, the unit to, to be able to, to call and check in on a, on, a, on a user of that equipment. 4G is now used more extensively with a lot of our clients, including BMW, who offer internet and the car services, which is great for keeping the kids in the back seat happy on their iPads if you're on a long journey really helpful application. However, we're seeing more and more use cases that have challenging sets of requirements around reaching those machines that are out in the field. Satellite is a new, op a new product that we can offer as a consequence of a partnership that we've done with in Inmarsat. We can now offer satellite connectivity. It's really great for, um, we've seen it quite prevalent in cargo, you know, remote cargo, where you might be at sea for long periods of times and you have high value goods. Um, Tesco would be a client of ours who are using it for rapid deployment of EPOS terminals. So lots of really, a real variety of use cases that you ha we have out there that would fit that particular need. And then of course there's fixed. I mean, it seems very traditional, but Vodafone would offer a range of fixed services, particularly here in Ireland where we have uh, a, a big uh, investment locally in Syro, into a joint venture company that we've, we've created with ESB Networks to provide fiber to the home. But more from an enterprise point of view, we also uh, offer fix, a range of fixed services in terms of DSL, fiber, and, and lots of different options. 
And those are relevant when you consider some more uh, critical use cases. So it's considering what the application is for that customer. When we look at the national grid, they have very, very uh, critical services that they need to run. They need to communicate with important stations. We can't see the energy grid going down. So as a consequence, when we supply them services, we consider a mix, a mix of cellular, a mix of fixed services, satellite, whatever it needs, whatever that particular site requires, we'll provide a range of services. And we're moving away to try and get away from that kind of metered data service towards an as-a-service model. So take the burden of responsibility away from a, of a technology buyer towards speaking to a, a, a vendor who can just provide an end-to-end solution. So the final kind of area is in the category of LPWA, which I'll go on to. I think if there was a straw poll for this conference, this is probably the acronym that was most heard. I don't know whether you agree or not. It's this around BIOT, and I think in, this, in, in technology we love acronyms, so I'd be delighted to see us come up with a new name for these types of communications. I'm not going to try and explain from a technical point of view. I think we've all talked about LP, LPWA, but this is a fantastic, from, from, a, from a business point of view, I see this category of, category of communications as a fantastic way <clears throat> of opening up new opportunities. The fact that this technology is low cost, low power, and great coverage means that we can now provide connectivity to endpoints that are under the ground, that are really rural, deep in forests, under, you know, in, in random and obscure locations. We can consider new deployments in smart home to provide connectivity and instead of having to, <coughs> excuse me, instead of having to put multiple gateway devices into a home, you can have a single, use LPWA technologies to connect into every unit that's out there. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that this technology has emerged. There's a number of different flavors in it. From a Vodafone standpoint, we consider narrowband IoT or NB-IoT to be the best that's out there. We're not on our own in that space. There's a number of vendors who, who would agree with that. And uh, like the likes of Huawei, obviously the sponsor of this event would, would endorse that also, including other vendors would include Intel, Ericsson, uh, Ublock, so Newell, numbers of uh, very um, credible companies in the space of communications. So, so NBIoT, as I say, is our version that we're going to be launching. The good news from an Ireland context is that this technology has been launched in the Irish market. Um, you may have seen announcements about that previously. The, uh, the update probably to provide today is that we expect to have narrowband and IoT available in the Irish market from January. Um, from a, for a commercial launch in Q2. So it'll be available to customers to test and dev imminently, which really affords, I believe, Irish customers here today an opportunity to really try the latest and greatest. Our other markets that were deploying this, this to in Q1 include the Netherlands, Germany, and Spain. And we, always, we already have some live cities in Spain. But Vodafone will be launching this to every market around the world. So it's, it's, it's planned. So maybe just to give you a quick taste of a live customer who's benefited from the technology, because there's not that many, it's, it's brand new. We did conduct a project um, with Agua de, Agua de Valencia. Now, excuse my pronunciation, I don't speak Spanish. But this is in Moncada in Valencia in Spain. Um, this is a, a, national, a water company who have a range of assets that they need to monitor. And they were using a mix of technology to serve underground uh, components, units that were located in basements, really hard to reach locations. And they were being served by a mix of, mix of connectivity types from cellular through to unlicensed radio, unlicensed mesh. So the, the, the organization were really struggling to, um, to manage that breadth of vendors. We deployed a test environment and we connected up 70 meters across a very large range of 10 squared meters. And we were able to connect into each of those components very easily. So it really proves that, tech, that the technology works under the ground in really difficult and hard to reach places. And I think it really showed the value of being able to buy a technology from a vendor on an as a service model without having to invest in your own owning, of, your, your ownership of that technology yourself. So they no longer need to operate and run their own licensed radio to support the grid. They can, they can work and focus on running the water network and be able to procure connectivity services from vendors such as Vodafone and others. 
So I know I'm kind of slightly overrunning, so I'm going to try and be quick here. I had a couple of tests, a couple of case studies to talk you through. I'll shorten it down somewhat. But I'm going to tell you just about um, another customer that we have seen has done, uh, demonstrated huge value and benefit from IoT. And they're an Irish customer who were here yesterday, um, Keenan's, or Keenan. I love talking about this one. So Keenan are in the agri <clears throat> Excuse me, Karen Keener are an agriculture company or operate and support the agri agriculture. They make um, and are a leading provider of animal nutrition services. So they make uh, livestock feeding units. This, this green unit here that you see is pro it's, farmers would buy these units and they distribute feed out to, to cows to um, ensure that they're. Uh, healthy and, and well and getting just the right type of nutritional feed that they require to produce the best quality beef and dairy. This company have been established since 1979, an indigenous Irish company, and for years they provided single, uh, they had a single um, uh, sort of relationship, a one-sort relationship with their customers where they sold them a feeding unit. However, when we worked with them a number of years back, we, we provided them a connected feeder solution. So now Keenan's are able to offer their customers nutritional advice. They're able to communicate with the farmer and help the farmer ensure that they're getting the best possible beef or dairy output for their herd. So the unit is fitted out with, um, with intelligence. It's able to identify the, the number of herd, the number of animals in a herd, and distribute just the right amount of pellets or feed and mix the right amount of feed to support a really, um, a really healthy herd. What, they're find, what they found is that milk production has increased by 1.75 by 1 kilo per cow per day. So that's a really measurable benefit that Keenan's has, have been able to deliver to their customers. And we're farming, in the farming community, margins are razor thin, so every benefit you can achieve is really, is really appreciated. So I'm going to skip through my next one because I see the time clock is ticking here. I'll maybe just show you one last... Um, message and this is really about a customer who um, is able to demonstrate uh, hope. Um, Exco Bionics are a US based customer and they provide exoskeletons to customers, to, to, to patients. So this is an application that supports um, humans, it amplifies human potential, where people have been injured, where people are unwell, they can wear this apparatus and it will help improve their movement. Instead of explaining it, I'm actually just going to play a short video. I'm an ex-soldier. I got sent to the Falklands to run a team out there for six months. During an exercise, I got shot. Bullet went straight through my hip. I hit the ground and it just couldn't move my legs. So I kind of knew straight away that I was paralyzed. So I spent two years rehabilitating and about three years in, I found out about exoskeletons. I found EXO and realized this is something that could really help me. Exobionics is a human-centric robotics company. We make robots that wrap around a human being. We originated in California prior to Exobionics' start. Really, this was the stuff of science fiction. We had the technology that helped to make this much more feasible. Our collaboration with Vodafone in the Internet of Things has been very important for multiple reasons. We've got dozens of sensors in the legs and the feet and in the motors. The sensors throw off a lot of data. They're collected, they're transmitted through the Vodafone SIM, and the power behind it allows us to capture a lot of data and then really use this for giving it to the rehabilitation clinic so that they can know what to do with their patients the next time around. I kind of had the idea that it would just be nice to get up and walk. Then when I saw the device and walked in it, I found out there was more to it and realized this could be something that can help me rehabilitate. The Vodafone Internet of Things solution has helped Exobionics an awful lot because it is much more reliable. For our manufacturing and operations, it allows us to provide one solution for the globe. We don't have to worry about a different solution for the U.S. versus Europe. We can also look at it in a larger cohort to see trends, for example. What we've found with Vodafone is truly a partnership. We're working closely with them, not just on the current products, but on the future products. And if you can imagine how important data is in the clinic, it's going to be even more important when you take these devices into the home. 
now I'm getting so much progress and so much more function, it's a possibility I could use the EXO to the point where I wouldn't need the EXO anymore. And that's scary. That's scary because I never thought that would be possible. But we just wait and see. I think that's a lovely story just to really encapsulate the optimi the, the inspiration that can come and the transformation that can come from IoT. So anyway, listen, thank you for listening. Just to close, if anybody has any queries, if you ever want to hear more on this topic, we are going to be having a networking day for, uh, available to all of you. You're very welcome to attend in, in January. There's a typo there. Sorry, the 24th of January in the Marker Hotel. Um, please register. There's an uh, invite down on our stand uh, with a short code to register your, your interest in the event. So we're going to focus that across three core verticals, which are typically of quite, of quite interest, so health, uh, retail and agri, so I can, if you, if you register your inter interest, we'll be able to send you, <coughs> excuse me, some more information. Thank you.